let's bring the tip of the index finger to the base of the thumb. And, the, and then the middle finger and the thumb come to connect. But take the thumb to the inside nail of the middle finger. So rather than the tip, bring the thumb to the inside nail, fingernail of the middle finger. So it's pressing on the side of the middle finger. Palms face up. This is Brahmara Mudra. Brahmara Mudra is the humming bee gesture. Closing your eyes. We are working with the full moon energy. This full moon in Capricorn, known as the strawberry moon, the honeymoon, the rose moon. Because this is a season of blooming. Bees buzzing and pollinating, gathering nectar. Take a few settling breaths here. We'll be practicing Brahmari Pranayam today. And if you do experience hay fever, have nearby some tissues in case you start sneezing. Brahmari breath is the honeybee breath in which we make a humming sound at the back of the throat. Take a full breath in through your nose. And as you exhale, keeping your lips closed, make a humming sound Release the breath slowly out through the nose. So you experience an inner vibration. The sound will be most present around the neck and the head. And if you are experiencing hay fever, this sound, this breath can help ease the um, airways, the nasal passages, where we are often experiencing some irritation or tickling sensation. Let's take two more Brahmari breaths, like so. Inhale through nose. Inhale through your nose. Exhale, Brahmari. Mm. Open your eyes. Bring your hands together in Anjali today. So, Anjali, this bud like um, gesture, the fingertips are pressing together, the outer edges of your hands, your thumbs and little fingers are pressing together, but you have a small gap between the palms, between the palms. This is Anjali Mudra. Opening by chanting Om three times. Inhale fully to prepare. Om. Inhale. Oh. Inhale. Oh. Open your eyes. So you'll notice that that when we chant OM, that mmm sound is the same sound as we create in the Brahmari breath. 
So that internalizes the OM. So the OM starts as an outward sound, and then we draw that vibration in towards our heart. So this primary breath, although a deeply inward turning breath, helps to vibrate the heart so it becomes more expansive. So we're going to continue with the full moon energy that we connected with earlier on. Extend that left leg long and keep the right foot hugged in, tucked in here towards the body. Turn the heart over towards the left leg. As you inhale, lengthen the crown, drawing the spine tall. And then as you exhale, hinge forward from your hips, reaching as far forward as you can with your heart towards your knees. Maintain the length of your crown. Some of us may be closer to our left leg. Some of us may be a little bit higher. Gaze towards the big toe. Your drishti here to create a circuit of energy. One more breath here. Now reach your hand towards the ankle, your shin, your ankle, or your big toe, that left hand. Wrap your fingers around your big toe if you're reaching for your big toe. And then begin to spiral your heart up towards the sky. So you might help with your right hand hugging your ribs up towards the sky. And then reach up and over with Brahmari Mudra. So the Brahmari Mudra, remember, curl the index to the base of the thumb. Take the tip of the thumb to the, uh, the inside edge of that middle finger nail. Extend through this right arm. Perhaps you turn your gaze up so you feel an opening in the side body here. <laughs> so when you're ready, my friends, let's take the right arm up and over, bring the right hand down towards the earth and reach up and over with the left arm. And then back to center, take a moment here. Bring in the sole of the left foot to meet the right foot here coming into Baddha Kanasana butterfly pose. Bring your hands to your ankles or your toes. Lengthen here. Open the heart, create an expansive space. When we're working with this, self, um, this moon, just after the solstice, we were talking about how this is a turning point and there may be some natural tension that arises. This natural tension will be through this sense of opposites where we connect with this very grounding and settling energy of this earthy moon. And yet our mind and our heart may be wandering, may be nomadic. So this pull of the earth and the pull of the sky Three more breaths here. I invite you, if you wish, to take Brahmari breath at any point. Brahmari breath is the honeybee breath. Mm. On my walks recently with the dogs, the meadows have been buzzing with bees and blooming flowers. So taking this opportunity to observe the bees at work. Rhythmic. There's a sense of structure, the way that they travel around the plant, the flower. Send the right leg long, tuck in the left heel. Turn your heart over towards the right foot. Lengthen first to create some height. And then exhale, hinge from the hips as far forward as you are able to reach taking into account the needs of your body. Your heart is melting towards the knee. Your right toe is reaching up. Gaze towards the right toe to create this 
cycle of energy, this connection. Again, introduce Brahmu breath. Measure what you need in your practice. So we're starting off grounded in our practice today. Capricorn is an earthy sound, sign, a grounding sign, sign. So this full moon, in the wisdom of this full moon is to ground, settle, stabilize. Yet it also is drawing upon this sense of the opposite, the, this sense of being nomadic, this sense of being fluid, this sense of being um, courageous in times of change. I now invite you to reach either with your right hand towards the right shin, the right ankle, or the right big toe. Wrap your peace fingers around the toe if you are reaching for that toe. And then with the left hand, let's help the heart to turn up towards the sky. To gaze up towards the moon. And then let's take our left arm up and over. Bring your hand into your mudra. Curl the index to the base of the thumb. And the thumb sit, connects with the inside of the fingernail of your middle finger. And gaze up. Have the sense of creating space. Keep Connecting through that left leg, the left sit bone, the left thigh, the left knee with the earth. We may be tempted to lift. If that rises up, then perhaps we rise up a little bit more and not deep, go so deep into this lateral stretch, this variation. Remember, our bodies are all individual and unique to us. One more breath here. And then let's reach up and over with the left arm. Take the right arm up and over. And back to center. Bring the soles of your feet together back in Baddha Kanasana. Perhaps this time you're either more generous or less generous, depending on what you did last time. And again, let's lengthen here. Open the heart. Ground through the sit bones. And then lift the heart and the crown. And again, I invite you to connect with Brahmri, Pranayama, honeybee breath. Inhaling through your nose and exhaling through your nose. Keeping the lips and mouth, lips closed and making a gentle humming sound. Mm. And perhaps in your mind's eye, you visualize the strawberry moon, the rose moon, the honey moon, the sweet nectar of the moon. Our mantra for today is Om Som Somaye Namaha. Om Som Somaye Namaha Som Somaye Soma, this rich nectar, or Amrita, it is said that the full moon in its illuminating rays releases this sweet nectar to enrich the earth, to enrich us, to bring sweetness. So, another paradox of this full moon is that we may be leaning into difficult conversations, letting go of hard situations. And from that release, from that letting go, from that surrender, we can experience the sweetness of the space that comes thereafter, of the peace, the tranquility, the calm that comes thereafter. Let's chant our mantra three times. Om Som Somaye Namaha. Melt your heart towards the earth. Om Som Somaye Namaha. Melt a little bit closer. 
Om Som Somaye Namaha. Enjoy the sweetness of this release in the hips, the release of the nectar of this moon. Think of the sweetness of strawberries, the sweetness of honey, the sweet smell of roses. One more breath here. And then let's rise up, maintain the long spine as you do. Take the left knee and bring the left knee to the heel of the right foot, the left heel towards the hip. Let's twist over to the right. So come into this Marigi deer rotation, hands on the earth. Yogi's choice here. You can stay up high, my friends, or you can come onto your forearms, or you can come all the way down to the earth. Extend your arms long if you're coming down to the earth. Eyebrows center resting on the earth. This is going to be a beautiful place succulent, abundant place in which to practice Brahmari Pranayam. Inhale through your nose. Exhale, Brahmari. From here, inhale, lift your eyebrow center. Walk your hands back towards your body. Rise up for a moment up here high. Take your hands a little bit wider. We're going to transition into Kaputasana, pigeon pose from here. So let's turn on the front of the left leg. Bring the right knee, shuffling it up towards your right hand. Reach behind you. You might need to shuffle around to create some space as I do because half my mat is always taken up by the dog bed. If you want to adjust that right shin, you are invited to do so. Reach up tall, reach up high here, opening the heart, broadening across the collarbones. If you wish, you can place a cushion or a folded blanket underneath the right hip. Lengthening here in Raja Kaputasana. Bend into your left foot left knee. You can reach back and take hold of that foot or reach back towards it. Turn to gaze towards the left foot. Ekapada Raja Kaputasana. One more breath here. Turn your gaze to front, bring your left hand down, release that left foot to, to the earth, rotate onto that hip. Let's turn our knees into the other direction so we create this zigzag with the right knee by the left heel. And it always helps to have a lot of space. Sometimes, my friends, one yoga mat isn't enough. It's quite nice to have a yoga mat that's lined across the main one so you can have more space on a yoga mat. Have okay, I have a little bit of carpet here. So turn the heart over to the left now. Let's come into this Meringi deer rotation towards the left. And my friends, again, you can stay up high in your hands. You can bring your forearms to the earth. Or you can extend your arms long and bring your eyebrow center directly to the earth or onto a cushion or folded blanket. Again, let's connect with Brahmari Pranayam. Inhaling through the nose and then exhaling Brahmari honeybee breath to connect with the nectar, the amrita of our practice. This practice is a grounding practice. Experience the deliciousness, 
the delight of being connected with the earth, which nourishes all of us. And as we are deeply rooted in the earth, the full moon's brilliance, radiance, pours sweet nectar over us. So even when we're going through change and turbulence and our foundations feel insecure and unstable, there may be this sense of feeling restless, nomadic. The pull of the earth, the grounding into stability helps us to move from a place of attunement of attachment and attachment in this way is not attachment to the material outcomes of worldly fulfillment but attachment in a way that we value our connection to nature our connection to the earth's rhythms and cycles when you're ready my friends let's rise up from our dear pose walk your hands towards you and we're going to turn into pigeon kaputasan on this side so bring that left knee towards the left hand. Roll onto the front of the right leg. Extend that foot behind you so that you have lots of space there. If you wish, you can sit on your left hip and help bring that left foot a little bit more parallel or the shin a little bit more parallel, depending on where you are with your person. Come up high in your fingertips. If you wish, you can place a block underneath that left hip. So I just place the block there and that gives you something to sit on so that it helps to balance and stabilize your pelvis. Let's rise here. Heart is open, crown. The Sahasara is reaching up towards the knee. Sense of fullness and expansion here. And when you're ready, my friends, let's bend into the right knee and reach behind for the foot with the right hand. So you can be reaching behind or you may be connecting your foot. Turn your gaze to look towards your foot. One more breath here. And then release your foot. Bring your hand back to center. Roll onto your left hip. And then let's bring both our feet together. And this time, we're going to come into what we call um, the Parvati Asana. So bring the heels as close to you as you can. So for Butterfly pose, we normally have lots of space. For Parvati Asana, we bring the heels as close as we can to our groin. Open out your knees and then let's flutter them very gently. And as we flutter them, so creating opening here, let's connect with our Brahmri Pranayam, our honeybee breath, the sweet breath. This is very soothing if you do experience hay fever. Inhale through your nose. Exhale, Brahmi. And notice how as you flutter, the sound vibrations is almost as if you're creating music or oh, um, the harmonium, the vajja, that this growth and um, contraction of sound. If you're around very young children, listen to how they sound when you pat them on the back as they fall asleep, feeling safe and secure. And then make this self-soothing sound. This is the sound of the Brahmi. Let's release our body with the asana. Swing our legs around. Come onto our knees. Coming into table here, Bhamarasana. Hands underneath your shoulders. Draw your navel in. Untuck your toes. 
lengthen your crown, Mr. Hasara. Connect with the muladhar, so the muladhar here at the base of the spine, and the sahasara here. Draw this imaginary connection. Visualize this connection between the root and the crown. As you inhale, lift the base of the spine, the tailbone. Dip the abdomen. Lift the heart. Lift the gaze. Madriyasana, cat pose. Exhale to round. Vitliyasana. Let's cycle through this fluidity. So as you um, notice the fluidity, imagine that your spine is moving through honey. And then when you've done your three rounds at your own pace, my friends, let's extend that right leg long, tuck the toes. Open up with the left arms towards the side. Bring the base, the index finger to the base of the thumb. Take the tip of the thumb to the inside fingernail of your middle finger in your Brahma Mudra. Lift your gaze up towards the sky. If it helps, draw your hand across your heart to open up towards the sky. One more breath here. Exhale. Take the left arm underneath your body. Thread it through. Bring the left shoulder and left ear to the mat. Keep your right hand on the earth for balance. So using that right arm as a scaffold. You can also tuck the feet toes of the left foot to help you balance here. And if you wish, my friends, reach up with your right arm to the sky. Balancing here. One more breath. Exhale, right hand to the earth. Inhale, left fingers to the sky. Bring the left hand down. Bring the right knee in towards your heart, round through your spine, and then lift the right toes up towards the sky behind you. Reach back with your hand to take hold of your foot. Exhale, left hand to the earth. Release the right knee here. If you wish to rotate that rest, right wrist, please take that opportunity. Extend the left leg long. When you're ready, let's draw the right hand up towards the sky. Bring your hand into your Brahma Mudra. Move across the heart to create, uh, create that opening and then reach up. Try your Brahma Pranayam here. How does it feel? Om Som Somaye Namaha. One more breath here, and then let's thread that right arm underneath the body, across the heart. Bring the right shoulder and ear to the mat. Keep this left hand on the earth with your arm acting as a scaffold. Your right toes can be tucked to help you reach for more balance. And when you're ready, see what it feels like to lift the left arm to the sky. And again, bring your mudra to your head. Thinking about this natural tension of opposites, this sense of stability and fluidity, this sense of settling and of being nomadic, of being still and moving, of being um, in conflict, and finding peace. This full moon really helps us to find the sweet spot in these moments of tension. When you're ready, let's bring that left hand down to the earth. Inhale, rise up with the right arm, and then let's exhale. 
to the earth. Tuck your toes. Walk your hands back towards your body and come up into Malasana here. Yogi squat here. So if you wish to reach for a block, to sit on a block, you may sit on a block. Have your knees and toes in the same direction. Let's bring our hands into our Anjali Mudra here, this seed, this bud of potentiality mudra. One breath here. And I'm going to invite you to begin to open your hands into Padma, the lotus flower. So keep the little finger and the thumb connected. Open the palm, open the middle fingers. And if you wish, my friends, reach above your crown. And you can prayer wheel back to Anjali at the heart. Let's do that twice more. And then prayer wheel. Om Som Somaye Namaha. Om Som Somaye Namaha. The reason we do this sense of lifting up towards the crown, which is where the thousand petaled lotus is, is to receive the soma, the nectar the amrita of the moon, and then absorb it within ourselves into our heart. So this is symbolic. And all the while we're grounded in the earth, malasana, very, very earth element, um, asana. Inhale here. And place your hands on the earth. Begin to straighten through your legs as you reach your hips and pelvis up. We're going to come into a functional forward fold here. So a functional forward fold, feet wide, toes pointing forward so that the outer edges of your feet are parallel. Have a soft bend in your knees, so avoiding this knock, locking of the knees. Hands on the earth. So bring your hands to the point where your hands are on the earth or bring them on blocks. Now with your hips and pelvis, reach back behind the heels. So the weight of your body is in your hips and pelvis here, the where the muladhar chakra is. So we're going to get a sense of grounding here. So our fingers, if they are on the earth, are lightly connected with the earth. Lengthen through the spine, the crown. Breathe into the back body. Let's take a Brahmari Pranayam here. Mm -hmm. Inhale, begin to unfurl your spine to rise up. And then let's turn to the middle of the mat. Now that prom primary pranayama we took there in that functional forward fold where we were focused on the muladhar by shifting our hips and pelvis back. I don't know about you, but I know I feel that vibration right in my mulabandha. So I feel that vibration deep in the pelvis. So think about how when you practice Brahmari Pranayam in different asana, this honeybee breath really gets to the root of you. Let's step to the right of our mat. Big toes touching. Lift all legs, uh, feet parallel. Whatever feels comfortable for you and most balanced. Lift the toes, place them on the earth one by one, starting with the little toe. Then press through the mound of the big toe and the inner heel. Press through the mound of the little toe and the outer heel. Unlock your knees here. Imagine that you're holding a block between your thighs so that you're hugging everything into the midline. Let's engage the mulabans by squeezing the pelvis. Hug in the ribs to engage the udhyana band. Open your palms, standing in mounting kadasana. Inhale to reach overhead. Let's bring our hands into our uh, muladhar um, mudra that we introduced the other day. So muladhar is um, interlace your ring and little fingers, tips of the middle fingers together, 
and then bring your thumb and index into this infinity circle where the tip of the index and the tip of the thumb are connected. This doesn't feel comfortable for your hands because it's not often a mudra that we can. Reaching up. Exhale over to the left. Gaze down towards the earth as if you were the moon. Inhale, center. Exhale over to the right. So we're now going to start with our Chandra Namaskar today. Inhale, center. Exhale, hands to the heart. Coming into Anjali. Step across the mat. Open out in Tarasana, star pose. Feet forward. Outer edges parallel. Lengthen here. Expand across your heart. If you wish, you can bring your fingers into your Brahmara Mutra. Exhale, turn your knees out, turn your toes out in the same direction, you bend into your elbows. Utkata Kanasana or Deviyasana. Goddess pose. Take a moment here. Open out into Tarasana. Turn the left toes up. And now let's turn the right toes at a 45 degree angle. So we're going to come into pyramid pose here. So you might want to shuffle that left foot out wide and take the right toes wide so that you create a broad base for your pyramid, your Parshavottanasana. Or you can be on a narrower base. Turn your hips to face the short edge of your mat. Let's bring your hands into Anjali at the heart. Unlock your knees. As you exhale, lengthen and then hinge. So you come halfway here. Check out what's happening with your knees. Avoid the locking. One breath here. In Parshavottanasana. Bring the right hand down towards the earth or onto your brick or your bolster or a large book. Take the left hand to the base of your spine at the sacrum and begin to rotate your heart towards the left. Keep grounding through the left foot. Inhale, reach the left arm to the sky in Brahmara Mudra. Here in this twist, this Parivritta Parshavottanasana. One breath here. Exhale, left hand to the inside of the left foot. Draw the right arm across your heart to reach up. Kanasana. Exhale, turn your gaze, bring your hands to the earth. Turn on the ball of the right foot and then gentle hop, lift that right leg off the earth. You can keep the right toes on the earth for balance or you can lift your leg parallel. Your left hand is slightly ahead of your right foot. Flex into your right foot, and then let's draw that right arm up towards the sky. If you wish, if you happen to be near a wall, you can place that right leg against the wall for balance. You can place your hand on a wall, that left hand on a wall for balance. So there's lots of ways to reach into this pose and keep the right toes on the air. One more breath here. Let's bring the right hand to the earth and find the ground with the right foot. And let's come back into our pyramid pose. Inhale, hands to your heart. Pressing into the four corners of each foot 
rise up slowly to come into standing pyramid. You keep taking this movement all the way through so that you lift your gaze up towards the sky to come into reverse pyramid. The hands can stay at the heart or you can reach overhead with your Padma, lotus flower. One more breath here. Exhale, Anjali to the heart. Take a moment here. Turn the left toes in. Bring both feet parallel to the short edges of your mat. Open out in Tadasana star pose. Bend into your knees, coming into Deviyasana. No rush here. Enjoy the... If you think about the word soma, when you think about the word somatic, the same root, and that root word of this fluidity, of this sense of ease, surrender, of being, of flow. From the Vyasana, let's bring your hands together at the heart and step across the mat over to the left. To come to standing mountain here to Dasan. Bring your hands into your Muladhar. So bring cross the little fingers and the ring fingers, tips of the middle fingers together, interlace the opposite thumb and index by creating an interlocking circle, and then reach overhead. Exhale over to the right. Inhale, center, over to the left. Inhale, center, hands to your heart. Take a moment here. So we started by working on the left side first. And now we're going to work on the right side. So when we're working with the lunar energies, we work on the left side first. Rather than our dynamics, Surya, solar practices in which we start on the right. The left aspect is the nurturing, receptive, harmonious aspect, cooling aspect. Reconnect with your Muladhar Mantra. Inhale to reach up. Exhale over to the right. Inhale, center, over to the left. Inhale, center. Step across your mat, opening out into Tarasana. Brahma Mudra here. Om Som Samaye Namaha. Bend into your knees, turn your toes out, coming into Utkatakanasana. Devi Asana. Back into star. Let's turn our toes so we can come into our pyramid pose. Turn the right toes up. Now you're on your pyramid base. Decide what kind of pyramid base you want for the most stability, whether it's wide or a little bit narrower. Hands at the heart, turn the hips so the hips are over the right leg. Unlock your knees, exhale, hinge from the hips. Spine is long here. Crown reaching forward, Sahasava reaching forward. Koshava Vottamasana. One breath here. Let's bring the left hand down towards the asana, friends. Onto blocks or your footstool or a bit of furniture or even the wall, whatever is available for you to connect with the earth. With your right hand, help to turn your gaze and your body up towards the sky. Take the right hand either to your sacrum to help you start here. And then you can reach your right arm up. Try a Brahmari Pranayam here. Mm. 
gaze down towards the earth. Let's bring that right hand to the inside of the right foot. With the left arm, draw it across your heart to reach up. Turn down towards the earth. Bring the left hand to the earth here. Bend into your right knee. Rotate onto the ball of your left foot. And then gentle hop to lift that left leg. That left leg can be wherever you wish. The left toes can stay on the earth here. Remember your hands can be directly connected with the earth or they can be on blocks or a low footstool. When you're ready, my friends, we're going to move into Adha Chandrasana. So right hand comes slightly ahead of the right foot. Flex into that left foot. And then with the left hand, work your arm across the heart to reach up. And if you fall and wobble, go back in, find a variation, which works for you. There's no judgment here. When you're ready, bring that left hand to the earth and then let's find the earth behind us with our left foot to come back into our pyramid base. Bring your hands in uh, Anjali at the heart. Pressing into all four corners of your feet, keeping your spine long. Let's rise up into standing pyramid and keep moving here to lift the gaze towards the sky. Make sure you have lots of space at the back of the neck here so that you are supporting your head. And if you're ready and you wish you take Padma, this lotus flower, from which pours the nectar, the soma, towards, towards your crown and reaching behind. One more breath here, then let's return to neutral spine, bring your hands to your heart, turn your toes, so you come back into Tarasana, Star pose, bend into your knees. And then back into star. We're going to step over to the right where we started. Bring your hands in under at the heart. Interlace your fingers. Ring a little finger. Keep the middle fingers extended and tips connected. Interlock your index and thumbs into this infinity, Muladha Chakra, reach up. Exhale to the left, to center, to the right, to center, hands back to your heart in Anjali. Om Som. Somaye Namaha Om Som Somaye Namaha Let's step across the mat. Bend into our knees by turning our toes out. Come into our Malasana. And let's sway here from left to right. Whoa, there goes my vata knees. <laughs> I love my vata bones. Bring your hands to the earth. Let's extend the left leg long. Toes reaching up, coming into skandhasana. So be on the ball of your right foot, or some of us may be able to bring the whole of that right foot onto the earth. Your knee is bent here. Find your drifty, something on the horizon that's not going to move. And then reach up tall here with your crown. Grip the earth with the right toes. You can be sitting directly on the earth or you can have a block or a seat underneath your bone, sit bones. Hands in Anjali here. If you wish, you can rise with your hands above your crown in Padma. And if you wobble, that's okay. Just find your balance again. We are mastering these energy. So here is the test of this settling, grounding energy and this nomadic, nomadic, restless energy.
One more breath here. Exhale, hands to the earth. And then walk across the earth and extend through your right leg long so that you come onto your left foot or your left sit bow. And then again, let's ground here first before rising. Flex that right foot. Your toes on that right foot are going to act like ruggers. So those toes are going to be moving. The left toes, if you're on the ball of your foot, are going to be gripping the mat like claws. Engage your navel. Lift your crown. Find something on the horizon that's not going to move. And then if you're ready, you can come into Anjali or you can have half your hands here. Start them above your crown. And when you're ready, let's come back into our malasana. Make some movements, whatever you need. Come onto your seat. Let's hug everything in like we're a seed. And then let's extend our legs here long. We're going to come into a forward fold here. Paschimottanasana, so that the the back or the west side of our body is, is um, exposed to the rays of the moon. The back of the heart is exposed to the rays of the moon. Have a bend in your knees if you wish. Lengthen here. So we start with Dandasana, staff pose. Exhale, hinge from the hips and reach forward with your heart towards your knees. Hands can rest wherever on your legs or the earth they are. And then when you're ready, you can release your heart, your crown. Check what kind of sensation you have in your lower back here. If you, have, if you experience sciatica. So if you're feeling this in your lower back, stay a little bit more upright. <clears throat> We'll reach forward. And I invite you to take your Brahmari Pranayam here, your honeybee breath. Inhale through your nose. Walk your hands back towards your body to rise up. Take a moment here with helping hands. Let's bend into our knees. Windshield wiper them left and right. And then let's cross our legs and come into our sukhasan. If you wish to take shavasan, you're very much invited to choose to do that. Our time together is coming towards a close. <clears throat> I'm going to close with <clears throat> Shanmukhi. <clears throat> Excuse me. So there we go. Do you see the sound of the Brahmari is really working <clears throat> on me. It's clearing my airways and my passages. So you might find that you have to cough clear your throat you have to you know just clean out those airways it's a good thing we're getting rid and we're releasing what doesn't serve us <clears throat> we're going to come into shamukhi mudra shamukhi mudra is a withdrawal mudra so it withdraws us from our senses and i want you to kind of like sense how you feel here because for some people, this can feel very challenging. If you feel particularly anxious, then I advise you keep your eyes open. 
Otherwise, you may close your eyes. So let's take your thumbs and place them at the ear so that you can close your ears, but don't close your ears just yet until you hear everything else that I need to say. Then bring your index fingers to the inside of your eyelids. If you're keeping your eyes open, just bring them to the top of your nose where the bridge of your nose is. Bring the middle fingers to the outside the nostrils, the ring fingers to the top of the lips and the little finger to underneath the lips. And so what we do here in this shamuki, it looks like you're wearing a mask, which we're all very used to wearing. Um, and we're going to close our senses and then we're going to chant um, to take three Brahmri pranayams and then silently internally chant Om Som Soma Ye Namaha three times. Once you block your ears, you won't be able to hear me very well. It'll be like you're going underwater. So this is a great practice to start us off in meditation. If you want, keep your eyes open, my friends. When you're ready, preparing for your Shanmukhi Mudra, take three Brahmi Pranayams. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Releasing your Shanmukhi Mudra, your Brahmri Pranaya, your Mantra, hands in Anjali. And as we close with Om Shanti, let's open our Anjali Mudra into Padma Mudra, the blossoming, flowering of our lotus. Oh. Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Danyavad, Danyavad, Danyavad.